Today I want to talk about raising self-esteem. This information comes from Helen Watkins in Missoula, Montana. I'm doing this recording for a person that's very near and dear to me. She's my sister. You know who you are. I suggest that uh, first you go ahead and view my recording of progressive relaxation and black screen before you listen to this. Uh, so you will be in a very comfortable seated position. You will have maybe a glass of water in case your mouth gets dry. Um, you will be very comfortable. Uh, if you hear anything in the background, a, a car going by in your street, people walking around, just know that that's regular everyday things. So you know that everything is safe and normal for you. The same here for what I'm doing. You might hear me moving around, uh, checking some notes on paper or just shifting my position. So we all know that's natural and normal. Allow yourself to drift and float, drift and float. And listen to the sound of my voice what I'm going to be saying to you. Self-esteem is the way you think and feel about yourself. The more positive the feelings, the higher your self-esteem. The more negative the feelings, the more negative your self-esteem. Self-esteem affects the quality of your life. A high self-esteem can make you feel productive, capable, lovable, and happy. Low self-esteem makes you feel unproductive, miserable, worthless, incompetent, and unlovable. With low self-esteem, you may be outwardly jovial or you may be uh, able to act confident to the world or you may be highly successful in your work. But inside, you cringe and say to yourself, boy, if that world out there only knew what I'm really like, they wouldn't want to get to know me. They'd probably just go away. And so you carefully polish up your cover, your facade, and stay on the alert for fear you will be found out. What a miserable way to live. How do people get this way? Well, let's take a trip through your brain, through your mind, where all of those notions are stored. Think of an area in your brain containing all the experiences you have ever had in your lifetime. That area is not exactly a depository of what happened, but of what you learned from those experiences. That is, how you perceived them. For example, suppose at the age of two, you spilled a glass of milk and you heard someone say, bad girl, or bad boy. From this experience, you might get the idea that you are bad, even though the person saying that did not mean that exactly. They were just upset at having to clean up the milk and didn't want to have to do it again. But as a child, you can't help but think uh, concretely, that is, literally. You conclude, I am bad, or worthless, or I can't ever make it, or whatever that negative idea is. Therefore, the brain is always full of distortions from child thinking, which is just normally concrete and literal. Check out that brain right now. Maybe you can see, or hear, or sense the messages that are there. They may not all be negative, but they are always a product of child thinking. That is the perception of the child. I'll be silent for a moment while you check out those messages from the past. Now let's take a trip into your past and find out what faces go with those messages. Imagine, visualize, or pretend 
that you're sitting in a pink compartment on a train, looking out the window. As you look around your compartment, for you're the only one sitting in there, you notice that the compartment is pink all the way around. The ceiling, the walls, the furniture, so that you can almost feel the pinkness. The pinkness is strangely relaxing. That train will take you on a round trip into your past, all the way back to your birth, and then it will return to the present. Now the train begins to move along and pick up speed, but you have a control switch in front of you, and by moving that switch, you can control the speed of that train. You can even stop, if you wish, to get a better view of some incident you want to study more carefully. Perhaps you want to look at the people in those scenes and understand them better, and yourself. See them as human beings with human faults, limitations, and emotions. No one can be perfect, neither you nor I, nor any of those people's, uh, nor any of those people in those scenes. In a while, I will sign off so that you can go on this trip at your own speed. When the train reaches birth, take in a deep breath and get in touch with the energy from whence you came. That energy from whence you came is your essence. It is protective. It is loving. It is your life energy and it belongs only to you. Feel its power, its warmth, its protectiveness. Feel it as warm streams of energy surrounding and penetrating you. It will give you strength on the trip back. From birth, the train will head back on its return trip over the same scenery. However, on the return trip, you will be able to change your attitude toward these scenes, if you wish. You can even open a window and do something to change the event. Because on that return trip, you are full of life energy, which helps you to be more confident and self-assured. Take the time you need for your trip. Make it meaningful to you. Remember, you do not have to accept any more of those negative messages from the past. You can leave them back there. When you return to the present, take a deep breath and slowly open your eyes to become alert. Have a good, meaningful trip for yourself. Remember, you deserve it.